Good morning, fam. So I'm actually here a little bit early. Um, real heads up, I got my wisdom tooth taken out. So I'm gonna try to keep this short and sweet. Um, one, because it's super painful, but this is definitely worth it. So just uh, don't mind that swelling. I'm just gonna get set up and then start. So good, good morning, um, fam. I miss you. It's been a whole week. We're already at week six. Week six. I'm gonna go one more week, and that's the seven weeks on the How to Heal series. I just again want to commend you for taking the time out of your day to set this as a priority, and that's really what we're going to talk about this week on self sabotage yes so we got into the physical body we got into the mental and emotional now we're getting into that spiritual to really transcend the trauma through the spiritual body and that is where we take that action where we put our foot down where we reveal the self-sabotage that we have in our life and so why do we even care about self-sabotage how do we even get to a point where we think maybe I'm ready to change that. We get to that threshold of disgust that I've been talking about, the threshold of disgust, where you're exhausted from curling up into a ball by telling your friends all your drama from work or your relationship or just you know all the drama that's going on in your life. And then you're just tired of people pleasing, you're tired of uh, constantly going after people to impress them or put on a certain clothes or look a certain way or just talk and act a certain way to impress people. You get to that, that exhaustion where you're just so tired, you're so drained. And then instead of taking the time to say enough is enough, you just go numb. You go on autopilot. You go, this is just my life. I just am consumed in this drama so much where I'm just paralyzed, where I can't even move. And then maybe you even have these avoidance tendencies. And then where does that lead though? That leads to someone who's unfulfilled, who is missing something, who is desiring and longing to have something in their life and they're like, what is it? I have the money and I have the relationship and I have the accomplishments, I have the career, there's something, something that's missing in my life. And it's your authentic self with your authentic relationships to own who you are. And we need all parts of our life involved. We can't just avoid people and avoid situations and just put our arm out and say, I can't. We can't survive by just shutting or cutting off one part. We will miss it. You know, if you want to become a Buddhist monk, okay, then you won't miss the body part you just cut off, right? But that's not going to work for most of us. So we need to be able to live with all parts of our self involved and how, how Tony, how can we live with all parts of our self involved? And I just gave away the answer. It's your authentic self. To be your authentic self. I love these few songs. It's uh, one, one way to be your authentic self is to just admit all those emotions that you have inside. And there's this beautiful song called Issues by Julia Michaels. And she literally starts off by saying, I'm jealous. In the first sentence, I'm jealous. I'm overzealous. When I get down, I get real down. And when I get high, I can't come down. And so she's, she's saying that she's angry and she's doing all these things. And she's basically saying that I have issues and you have them too. So give me all my love and I'll give my love to you because we have the love that it takes to get over those issues. And your authentic self, you have, you possess everything that you need to get over those challenges in your life. 
to live with all parts of you involved, to not avoid, to not go around, to not pretend like they're not there, to not to go numb and go into survival mode. I lived almost my entire life from 18, from zero to 18 in survival mode. It's not fun. That's not where you're here. That's not what you're here to do, to be about, to be in survival mode. You're here to thrive, to be alive, to be on fire, to live with your light, to live as your authentic self. And then by admitting that we have these issues, she calls them issues, I call them challenges. Issues has this negative connotation as if someone's gonna judge you for it or she has issues and she could just play it off, shrug it off, shoulders, right? Like now it's not our responsibility, they have issues, right? No, but if they have challenges, you go, okay, I can help you with those challenges or I can just support you, I can listen, I can be here for you. And another song that I love, and it's actually, these are good songs to just listen to. They're on my Feel Good, Feed Thy Soul playlist on Spotify. And uh, it's Nunca Es Suficiente. So it's not enough, it's not sufficient. And um, it's from the Los Angeles Azules and Natalia. But she just says, Nunca es suficiente para mí, meaning that it's not enough for me. And the whole song is about how I love you so much and I need you more and more and we hang out, but then I need you, need you, need you, need you. And it's okay to be needy. It's okay to want affection. It's okay to want intimacy in your life. And so I love these songs because living in your authentic self isn't denying your emotions that they're there. It's not denying what you actually desire in life. It's saying, look, I have needs and I need to fulfill them in order to be fulfilled. So admitting your needs is one way to live in your authentic self. You need that love. You need that affection. You need the connection. You need the attention. And so how? How do you do that? Well, first, you don't just go and tell everyone what your needs are. No, 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 no. You identify your needs with yourself and then you go, I'm going to give those to you. Tony, I'm going to give them to myself. I'm going to give myself love. I'm going to give myself affection and attention and connection. I'm going to connect with myself. I'm going to just give, give, give to me. I'm not going to go out there demanding it from everybody else. It's not going to work. And then I'm going to go give that to others. We're not even, we're not even at the stage even yet near, near to ask people to give things to us. No, no, no. We're going to give it to ourselves first and then we're going to give it to others before we even ask for anything from them. We're going to give them love. We're going to give them attention, give them affection, give them connection. We're going to give it to ourselves, give it to others. And then you know what? Here, I'm giving you the spoiler alert change these notes. So the world seeks balance. The world seeks balance. So if you're constantly giving to you, that's one. If you're giving to others, that's two. So what are you going to receive? Life and the world and earth is going to want to make this equal. So then you're going to just give and receive. You're going to receive all that you've been giving to yourself. You're going to receive all that you've been giving to others. And you know what's so ironic is that when people start to just give you love and give you compassion and affection and attention and sympathy and all these things, you're going to go, I'm, I'm full. I'm so full of love and all those things that I need that you sharing that with me, I can now say, instead of saying, I'm hungry, feed me, feed me, feed me, feed me, and like sucking it out of them when they give it to you, you go, thank you. Thank you so much. It means so much to me. I love you so much. We're so connected, all these things. Now you're giving it back to me. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And who wants to stop feeding someone who keeps saying thank you? No one, you wanna just, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, here, yeah, more, 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 more. And then it's like this continuous feedback where you're just fulfilling yourself before you even step out your front door. And then you're just giving to others and you're receiving, 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 and you're thanking. And then it's this, this self-sabotage is now a self 
love. It's not a sabotage. You are feeding your soul. So give and say thank you. And then your cup, your overfills, you're, you're just overfilling with those songs we talked about having issues or challenges or it not being enough. Now you are enough. That's your authentic self. And then you get to this point where you're like so feeling so good because you're just taking care of you first because how can you love anyone else if you don't love yourself first? How could you expect anyone to give you love if you don't give yourself love? How can you expect anyone and demand love from somebody if you don't even know what love is because you don't give it to yourself? You have to value yourself enough to change. You have to see the value in you changing in order to change. And then all of this, all of this good stuff, you're getting love, you're getting connection, you're getting everything, all your needs are being met. And then you just come to this point where you're like Etta James and you just go, at last. And I would sing, but you know, my mouth kind of hurts. So, but you get my point. So at last, at last, my love has come along. My lonely days are over because my authentic self is feeding me, is sustaining me, is lifting me up. I'm not surviving, I'm thriving. And you put your hands over your heart and you feel, you feel all my needs are met. All my needs are met. And when you feel that, that's how you heal your trauma. That's how you transcend your trauma. Because it's no longer this thing we put behind us that we're shameful or guilty of. Because we're not going to do it again. We've learned our lesson. We have humility to say, look, the things that I have done and the things that I have failed to do, they're real. They're true. They happened. But look, I'm not afraid anymore because I've found self-love. I've found forgiveness for myself. And how you really build forgiveness, it's easy to just say, I forgive you. It's not so easy, but it's the first part is to say, I forgive you. But then it's that practice and developing trust. And how do you develop trust in forgiveness? You develop trust in forgiveness by stop self-harm. You stop doing what you are forgiving. You don't keep repeating it and then asking for forgiveness. No, no, no. You take your trauma and you, how you transcend it is you can step on it and say, look, I have failed to do this, but I'm not going to do it again. And you build trust. You build trust to rebuild and use that forgiveness to transcend your trauma. So... Another way, another beautiful way to get into that authentic self. How do we cultivate our authentic self? The Four Agreements is a beautiful, I can't even really think, seriously, I can't think of a better way to cultivate your authentic self other than, than after reading The Authentic Self, read this book, but um, to cultivate your authentic self. Because again, for forgiveness, you're building trust within yourself. If you have trust issues in your life, then you need to build trust with yourself before you go out into the world and try to do trust with anything, anyone else, any past, any future. You have to build trust, rebuild trust with yourself with yourself. And so the four agreements, you're gonna take those actions. The first one is to be impeccable with your word. What does that mean? To be impeccable with your word is to be honest. Maybe this looks like your partner invites you out or your friends invite you out or your family invites you out. And you're like, hey, I've been going out a lot. My brain, I'm just so tired, so exhausted and I really just need to rest. That's your authentic self. But then 
go home and rest. Don't go home and go on your phone or watch a movie or try to do work. No, 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 rest. Go get into the bathtub. You know, go sit down in silence. Go play music that you can dance. You can dance, you can dance. Just don't record it, you know? Like just try to get away from technology is as a way to consume and use technology as a way to create, to be, to let free, to let flow. You can listen to jazz, you can listen to classical music, you know? Take time to recover and feed yourself. Journal, sleep. Sleep is the best way to recover. But if you need something more than sleeping, maybe sleeping's just not enough because then you go out in the world and you self-sabotage. And, you, and you're back at the same thing, telling your friends and your family and your partner the same story, I'm so tired, I need a rest. So that's one extreme, that's one side, right? Then the other extreme is that you never go out and that's always your story. So your authentic self in that scenario would say, Okay, I need to go out. I haven't gone out. My authentic self is speaking. The reason I don't go out, this is authentic self, is because I'm nervous, because I'm scared, because I'm fearful. Can you, partner, family, coworker, anyone who's asking, friend, can you help me? I'm going to be nervous. I'm going to feel uneasy. Can you help me? That's your authentic self is asking for that help, admitting those emotions, admitting your needs. Then the second agreement, I want to make sure I go in order here. Don't take anything personally. How could you not cultivate your authentic self if you don't take anything personally? Your authentic self doesn't require approval of others to be who you are. You are who you are regardless, regardless if it's popular or mainstream or trendy or gets the likes or gets the comments or gets the followers. You are who you are regardless. That's your authentic self. So you don't take things personally. That's one way to cultivate it. And it's so hard, Whew, so hard. Another one part of, of, of be impeccable with your word is to not judge other people. If you don't want to be judged anymore, you got to stop judging other people. To be impeccable with your word is to speak the truth, not to condemn others, to see the beauty and the gratitude and the love within others. And that also follows through with the don't take anything personally. It's hard not to judge and it's hard not to take personally because that's our ego. That's something that we really, really develop here on earth is our ego. And sometimes, did you know that your authentic self isn't your ego? You're actually more and bigger and greater and more grand and more expansive than your ego. Your ego is just your tie to your human body. Your human body is what gets the trauma, right? It's the soul, the spirit, that's how we heal. And so we are more than our ego. To take things personally, it's, it's hard, but it helps when we stop judging other people, when we try to fix other people and change other people. I'm not coming on here to say, go change people in your life who are causing your self-sabotage. I'm saying it's you, it's gonna come from within. You don't need to go to your partner and tell them how they need to rule their life. You need to focus on you. And then maybe as you become your authentic self, you realize we're not a good match. Or, or you, maybe you do separate and then you realize, ah, we were a good match. Sometimes you have to lose something to really see the value in it. Sometimes you have to, you, that's even something that you can do for homework. You can visualize. Sometimes it's hard to find gratitude, to not judge. And sometimes, People in this love and light community, they just say, wake up and be thankful for your hands. And sometimes it's hard, like, I get it. No, no, I'm not asking you. Visualize yourself losing someone in your life. Someone that you may be finding irritating, annoying maybe. And visualize them 
and go, what would happen if they stopped doing what they were doing tomorrow? Would I miss them? Because that's the moment we can connect. And that's how you also become your authentic self. You ask these questions. This is how you feed your soul. You sit down, you don't go to the party, and you talk with yourself. And it's not weird. You just... And you wait for your authentic self to speak because our ego, we want to know everything. We don't want to be wrong. We know what we need. We do, right? Otherwise, we wouldn't be here right now. But our authentic self, they want to take, they want to speak, they're waiting, but they're so patient. They're so loving and understanding and compassionate that they just sit down. They sit down for the ego, right? But we just allow that, that authentic self to shine. And you know, you think it's going to be scary. You think I'm not going to recognize myself. I'm not going to know who I am. You will. You're going to be magnified in who you are. You're going to remember all the pain and suffering. You don't have to, you don't have to let, when you let it go, you don't forget. When you let something go, you don't miss the lesson. You learn the lesson. You let go of the weight and the light that came from that experience you take with you and it magnifies you. It puts you on fire. It sets your soul on fire. You live with it. It goes with you. You will not not understand or recognize your authentic self. Your authentic self will bring you all of your needs, the fire and the earth and the water and the wind and the space. It will have all of your needs met. You will not have to avoid people or avoid situations. The third agreement, don't make assumptions. Don't make assumptions. When you approach your partner or your coworker or employer or your family member. Don't make assumptions. Here's, here's, a, here's I did this visualization with Angel. He always comes up to me and I could be really busy with my hands full before he leaves and does anything. And at first I thought it was him like asking me for permission and part of it is like, can I go play basketball at the gym? But then I realized that it's not him. He's like checking in on me before he leaves. And instead of me being annoyed by it, I'm not assuming that he's coming here to annoy me. I actually took a second and I thought about it and I said, what if he stopped? What if he never came to me and would just leave the house without even saying bye? How would that make me feel? The reason I know how that makes me feel is because I have girlfriends, family, friends, mothers, and they tell me my husband just walks out, he has no respect for my time, no respect to even tell me where he's at. So I know how that feels because I've shared their pain, right? And then I have a husband now here that just willingly comes to me all the time and wants to check in and wants to like just see how I am. And I'm annoyed by that, like how ungrateful. So then you go through this whole visualization and then you realize, you know, what I did instead of making assumptions that he's here to annoy me, he's here to bother me, I went up to him and I said, thank you. Thank you for always checking in on me. I really appreciate it. It's a way that you show me that you love me, that you respect me, that you honor me. Thank you. Instead of me making an assumption and then barging into the room and trying to start a fight, I'm not gonna make that assumption. I'm gonna think about it first. That's your authentic self. The authentic self says, okay, I have emotions. Let me just read my emotion and say, do I agree with that? Okay. Then you bring in your ego, which is like your logic. And then you're like, do I agree with that? And then your authentic self, they are the ultimate part of you. It is you, your highest self that decides, that discerns. And that's, that's why you need to build the mental resilience. That's why you need to build your discipline. That's why you build discipline in your physical body by getting fit, by getting out there, even though you're tired and you feel like crap, you go and you walk because you build discipline in the physical body. And then in your mental body, that builds discipline to say, I can do one more push-up, I can do one more push-up. You're gonna do one more push-up because you're worth it, you deserve it, and you're already here, so just give me one more push-up. 
Then you develop your mental discipline, emotional discipline. I'm gonna tell you how I feel myself. I'm gonna write it down into my journal. Even, I don't wanna write, I hate writing telling you, I don't wanna write. Put it in your note in your phone. Record yourself on the audio recording on your phone. And you pushing yourself to do it anyway because you're worth it, because you deserve this, because you deserve to live with all parts of you involved. You're gonna do it and you're gonna develop discipline, mental resilience in your emotional state. And then you're gonna do it in your spiritual. Here we are, six weeks in. The self-sabotage ends today. Right now, it ends. We are not gonna do that. We're not gonna participate in that anymore because we deserve to live with all parts. We deserve to live through our authentic self all the time, not sometimes. Not when it's convenient for others. Not when we're gonna people please. No, 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 authentic self all the time on, all the time. Fourth agreement. Always do your best. Always do your best. How beautiful. We're gonna fail, we are gonna fail. We're gonna say self-sabotage ends today, but I'm just marking a point in history on I think it's September 5th, I believe. Yep, September 5th. We're just marking the point that on September 5th, 2021, the self-sabotage ends today, but it's gonna continue because then we realize that it's our habits that we are allowing people to step all over us because we need to set boundaries, that we are forgetting that we are here to end self-sabotage so we forget that priority. We're not making it a priority, we forget it. So we need to remind ourselves to remember, to make it the priority. And we do our best, we do our best because those habits, man, those habits, they've been there for years, if not decades, if not generations. Your habits have transcended through generations, passed down from your teachers who had trauma, from your parents, from your coaches, from your priests, from your pastors, from the neighbors, from everyone in your life that's had trauma, it's been passed down. So those habits, they're gonna take time. It's gonna take time. That's how time heals all, is because you're constantly participating. You show up, you co-create. You're here. That's how time heals all, but really it's love. Love heals all because time can go on. I'm sure you know people in your life that have spent their entire life and they're still not healed, they're still not happy, they self-sabotage all the time. You can write it down, you can show it to them and they still won't get it because time alone doesn't heal all. You have to participate and love and you have to learn the unconditional love for yourself. That's how you learn it the liberating, the liberating power of unconditional love. <sighs> Beautiful. Healing your trauma, transcending your trauma. So you do your best, you do these four agreements. That's how you cultivate your authentic self. Beautiful, right? So, we are coming up on our time now. I'm just gonna hit through a few more points. Wanna keep it short and sweet. So look, self-sabotage. I've explained it. We've figured out why it's here. It could be a lot to unpack. That's why at the beginning of this series, I didn't say we're gonna heal all your trauma. We're gonna just, you're gonna be fixed and you're gonna be perfect, you're gonna be authentic self. It took me my whole life. My whole life I've been working for my authentic self. And so you just, it can be a lot to unpack. So just focus on one category at a time. What area in your life is great? You can have great areas in your life but still have trauma. So what area in your life is great? Is it your physical body? Is it your relationship? Is it your career? Is it your financial standpoint? Is it your relationship with your family? What's great? And then what's not so great? Why are you here on a Sunday at eight in the morning? What's not so great in your life? Check that category. So you look at what's great, what's not great. So what's happening in the not so great area? What, what patterns are you repeating? What behaviors? What is your blind spot? This is where you're taking that participation and you're asking people for feedback. I know it's scary, but that's how you become aware of your self-sabotage. We, as people looking outward, can see people self-sabotage. 
But if you go and you ask someone that's in your life and you say, I have a lot of blind spots clearly because I can't help it, but I'm willing to try. I can't help it, but I'm willing to try. Can you, can you help me? Just give me one because if you just unload all the things that I do wrong, you're going to make me lose my motivation and I'm just gonna curl up into a ball and say how stupid I am and how I'm not worth it and how I don't have the capability. So just give me one thing that I do that you think is just the self-sabotage, the self-fulfilling prophecy. What's one quality, what's one trait, one behavior? That's how you become aware of that self-sabotage. And then you model, then you take up what's going great. You get that feedback, you realize, okay, what am I doing in the great part of my life? What am I not doing in the not great? Then you start to model it, you imitate it, you, you desire that frequency. Remember we talked last week about intention? You intend to raise the not so great to the vibration and the frequency of the great part of your life. You do those things, you model them. And so the authentic self, some people are like, again, that you fear of becoming it, you won't recognize who you are, that you'll, you know, there's this, uh, this false idea of the authentic self where you actually start to avoid people, avoid crowds. You go, you go, if they're not even worth it for me to try to explain myself. What if that person has the thing you need? And because you've just shut off that opportunity, you've closed that door because you don't feel confident enough to just explain yourself, to just try. Look, I'm not telling you to try with people who are just toxic and hurting you, but say that it's someone in your life who just genuinely just wants to talk. Just talk with them, don't avoid them. You know, they need your help. They can offer you something, maybe. Maybe, maybe it's just an insight, a reflection. When I listen to my friends talk about their husbands, I'm listening because I really care, but it's also giving me something. It's giving me insight into my marriage, into my partnership, and to what other people don't have that I have. And then I'm so grateful, and I just respect it, and I honor it, and I honor Angel. And then it's, you know, then we're doing great, and then they're doing great, and I, and it's just this beautiful, like, that's, that's a real connection. It's not this social media shit where you just tap, tap, like, like, send claps and hearts and shit. No, it's not. There's, that's it. That's it, where you share your heart, you share your love, you share your connection, your authentic self. It's beautiful, it's so beautiful, you don't even need your eyes to see it. So again, I'm gonna repeat this, I repeat this last, I said this last week, but real freedom is living without restraint. I'm asking you to set boundaries now, but you don't have to live with them forever. Remember, you take what serves you and you leave the rest. It's gonna serve you the boundaries for now, for now, but it's temporary until you build resilience, until you build trust, until you build your authentic self enough to where you go, I trust myself enough where I don't need that boundary because I'm not gonna react, I'm gonna respond. And you get to that point where you're like, I don't even need to say anything, silence. I found that silence is like sometimes the best thing to do. And so real freedom is living without a restraint, without boundaries, having a deep sense of trust in the world, living peacefully with unconditional love and knowing, knowing that others will do the same or in the least respect you. But freedom, hashtag freedom doesn't exist, right? It does, it does within ourselves. And if we want to be the change, if we have all these complaints about the world, we have to be the change that we wish to see in the world. We, again, can't expect others to just give us, give us everything we need. We need to give it to ourselves. So let me tell you something. Your insecurities, my insecurities, they limit me. They limit my authentic self. They, they are the ones that push me down and restrain me. That unsatisfied feeling that I didn't do enough. They limit my full expression. I am free. I am love. I am here. I share. I did enough today. Okay. 
I don't hold and harbor that which does not serve me. I'm sinking. I say it. I call it out. I let it go. I cannot be contained. So I tell it like it is. I'll tell you what nobody else will tell you. Why? Because I love you and you deserve better. I have no ulterior motive for being here right now with you on a Sunday other than I just, I love you because I've just given myself so much love. And, and just imagine how the world would be if we all gave ourselves this, this amount, this amount of love. I'm not gonna let you settle. I'm gonna let you know. It's not gonna be easy, I'm gonna let you know though. I'm gonna share the tools. I'm just gonna put it on the table, it's here for you. And then you decide, you decide, but I'm here for you. I'm, I'm really here and I'm not here to condemn you or shame you or make fun of you or tell other people that you came to me. No, 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 I'm not, no. I'm here to commend you, to connect with you, to support you, to laugh because you're gonna go through this if you really, really hit it on and you're just gonna laugh at yourself. You're just gonna laugh. So let me tell you this trauma, trauma, all the trauma that we have, it is actually, once we heal it, it's the immunity. It lives in our aura. It's the immunity to lower frequencies of life. That when people try to hate on you, it doesn't just bounce off because I don't care. It just bounces off because you're immune to it and you can actually look at the hater in the face and go, I love you so much. I, I know that you hate me because you're projecting on something that you don't have, but I just want you to know you can have it too. I, you can have it too. I know you're coming at me with hate, but I'm sending you love. I'm praying for you. I'm sending you light. I'm here for you still because I know how it feels to be where you're at right now, right? So let's leave it at that for today. Um, more, more things that you think maybe will scare you from being your authentic self. So will you lose friends in becoming your authentic self? Yes. Will you lose self-sabotage? Yes. Will you lose all that no longer serves you? It served you up to the point to survive here, but it no longer serves you. You're here for greater, you're here to thrive. You can't survive anymore, you have to thrive, so you have to let it go. Will you lose that? Yes. Will you gain love? Yes. Will you remember the pain of what got you here today? Will you learn the lessons that they had in it? Yes. Will you attract authentic people into your life? Yes. I love this, uh, my friend shared a reel and it's, um, he's like running back and forth in heels and I'll post it, repost it on my story, but he goes, you can only love yourself in the, uh, sorry, you can only love others to the extent that you've loved yourself. You can only receive love in the extent that you've loved yourself. And he goes back and forth, back and forth. And basically it's like, if I'm not willing to do it for myself, I can't receive what others are trying to give to me. There's so much love, so much light, so much opportunity that is waiting to be invited into your life, that is seeking to express itself, that is just ready. It's like, Tony, Tony, let me in. I just wanna help and I wanna love and I wanna give you opportunity and I wanna bless you. And I just want to have all your needs met. But we have to say yes, we have to let it down. We have to let that guard down. We have to build that trust. I know it's hard. I know it's hard. So self-sabotage ends today. And uh, you know, sometimes let's get into the makeup thing. So your authentic self, sometimes we think it has to be like this yogi. Like I'm a pretty extreme example, right? Because I just no makeup, I don't dye my hair, my natural hair, I don't really dress up like this. This is like the most I'll dress up just for this Sunday occasion. Sunday's best. Um, look, I'm not saying that you can't wear makeup to be your authentic self. Remember I asked you the second week, I said, who's wearing the makeup? Who's wearing the clothes? Are you wearing the clothes or are the clothes wearing you? Do they define you or do you just define them? Are they just a piece of material? So I'm not saying that you can't wear makeup. I'm not saying that you can't have nice cars and nice things and nice house and want money and all these things. I'm not saying any of that. 
I'm saying that if you dress up, if you drive a nice car, if you have money, have authentic conversations. Authentic conversations. Don't go and try to talk about drama or judge other people or laugh behind their back. Have authentic conversations about what you're really interested in, what they're really interested in. Genuinely want to connect and that's what you're gonna get. Again, with the four agreements is to be impeccable with your word, to not take things personally, to don't judge others. And uh, sometimes we think it's gonna be hard to be your authentic self, that it's gonna be like, oh, Tony, man, you're asking me for so many things. Look, again, I'm asking you to do less. I'm asking you to do less because look, your authentic self is actually so much easier to be than trying to impress others. Your authentic self, it's so much easier to be that. It's exhausting. It's actually easier to be your authentic self than to people please. That's draining. It just looks hard because you've never done it. Or it's just been so long since you've done it. You used to be your authentic self when you were a kid, when you were a child, when you didn't care what you looked like or anything. I was a tomboy. You were your authentic self at some point when you birthed onto this planet. But then from our parents and our teachers and our friends just shaming us and making us feel stupid and then that's how we develop all this trauma, then we lose our authentic self. So it's only hard because you haven't been practicing it. It's only hard because you haven't had the resources and the people to remind you that your authentic self is worth it, that your authentic self is not draining. It's waking up eager in the morning with vitality and vigor and living with adventure in your life and not avoiding people and not numbing yourself and not surviving, but thriving. Living with all the parts of you involved. That's your authentic self. And you just need to... Like, how can you expect to be good at something if you were never taught how to do it? How can you expect something of yourself if you were never taught how to do it? Don't do that. It's hard, I know. But just know that you were just never taught. It's not your fault. It really isn't. So I'm going to ask you, make it a priority to end the self-sabotage. Become aware of it. Write it down. Ask for feedback. Then demand the boundaries that you need. You're not going to need the boundaries forever. You're going to live at this point, this, this healing series. You're going to get to the point where you don't need those boundaries. But look, right now you need them. So demand the boundaries that you need. And don't settle for less. Your time is right now. You have us. Let's talk. We are here for you. We're not here to judge or condemn. We're here to connect and commend. And it takes practice. And that's exactly why you're here. And that's exactly why we're here. Because you will mess up, you will fumble. But just think of the possibilities to wake up eager, to wake up curious, full of wonder, to develop a sense of trust within yourself, your authentic self, to identify your needs and fulfill them, to fail and say, it's okay, try again. Let's try again. You're worth it. You got this. You know, Maybe you just do this, going back to your intention, you do this for that child self who would have stand up to those bullies, to your parents bullying you, to society bullying you, telling you you have to look a certain way. And you are gonna stand up now for your child self, for your authentic self, and you're gonna nurture, and you're gonna raise, re-raise yourself, re-raise yourself. We were excited to become adults because we didn't have to listen and be told what to do. So now you decide. This is your life. You decide. You're in control. Your authentic self. <sighs> is something you can't even express in words. But you just feel it and you know it. So, as always, I'm here. There's really no homework today other than to identify the self-sabotage. And then throughout this week, just replay this. Replay this and repeat it as often. You can listen to it on the podcast. You can watch it on YouTube. You can watch it here on Instagram. Um, I'm going to do a few, actually a lot of videos this following week. My just my wisdom tooth healing. So, but you know what? I don't even feel it right now. I don't even feel it right now because I, I'm not attached to that physical part of my body. And it hurt. It really did hurt. But 
I'm gonna be sharing videos on how to set priorities and just a ton of other things that I've been missing and I think would really complement this series before we end. So we have one more week to go, but this is not over. This is just something you keep replaying, you keep watching until you take that action. Until you start to find that healing. Start transcending pieces and trauma in your life. All right, I love you so much. I love you so much. In light and love, namaste. Have yourself a beautiful, bright Sunday, a beautiful, bright week ahead. I love you, I'm here. Take care.